What's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite and tonight we're going to be talking about something I haven't really seen any discussion about which is the bonus launch of Plunder in Warzone Urzikstan. Definitely stay tuned. But before you jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, drop a like, and also as a reminder we got plenty of brand new coverage going up over on Detonated.com, expanding on all the content you're seeing here on the channel just in the form of articles for the website and plenty of tweets every hour on Detonated's Twitter. It's become a bit of a tradition every single year with the launch of a new Warzone iteration to make a sequel of some sort to my original plunder video from warzone 2020 essentially a video going over the best way to go ahead and strategize get max cash and win every match of plunder that you're in but this video tonight's gonna be going over even more than that the best loadouts to use the fastest way to level up weapons and the best way to really navigate your way through urzikstan for the brand new plunder experience now what's really funny is that i actually went ahead and asked people in my lobby of plunder what the point was for them to be playing plunder were they going for the win and what were their strategies in doing the best they possibly can in a match of plunder and many folks out there replied with some pretty crazy things including the fact that they're only there to level up weapons didn't really care about winning and some other stuff that i'll put on screen so you guys can see but here in the warzone or urzikstan experience plunder is limited to quads as of right now it could be changed a little bit in the future to where there's trio support even duos i'll keep you guys posted on that as of now the max players is 100 on urzikstan and the first two two million dollars in your match will trigger overtime and the original plunder from verdansk elite and I believe Caldera, you had to just hit 1 million to trigger overtime. But I believe Almazra's plunder last year began this new system where you have to hit 2 million since you can get a lot more cash around the environment than you were ever able to in Warzone 1. I'll also make a separate video if any secret challenges are found in this new iteration of plunder. I believe with just Almazra's iteration last year, there were some secret challenges that weren't really specified too much by a majority of the community, but I included them in my video from last year and allowed you to get a bunch of free cosmetics by doing certain and things inside of this game mode. But as far as best loadouts go for Warzone altogether, as of now, as reported by Detonated, the best loadouts include the Bass B, the Cat AMR, the Rival 9, Tack Eradicator, and even the WSP9. I will leave the article linked down below, providing you guys with all the best attachments for each of these weapons. The meta will shift every season, of course, as we're accustomed to with any iteration of Warzone, but there could be some tweaks made in some future patch notes or even the mid-season in January, in which I will go ahead and have that article updated for for you guys with the latest updates on the best loadouts and what the metas are for the current season. Again, you don't have to use these weapons to perform best in plunder, but they are the best weapons that you're going to want to use if you continue to play Warzone consistently, whether it's Battle Royale, whether it's Resurgence. So I'd recommend leveling up these weapons the most that you possibly can. And that's a good segue to the next topic here, how to best level up your weapons. Obviously, there's a good strat over in Kill Confirm with decoys for multiplayer, but if you go into any match of Warzone, no matter what squad size or what game mode, the best way is to go and complete contract and have the weapon in your hand that you want leveled up as you complete that contract. On top of the idea of just killing as many players as you can, you could do that in any version of Warzone, but in Plunder, there's no repercussions for killing and dying as many times as you possibly have to to get a weapon leveled up. You will continuously spawn in with your loadout in matches of Plunder, no matter how many times you die and no matter how many kills that you get. Don't gotta worry about loadout drops or buying your weapons from a buy station. So it's obviously fastest to level up the weapons that you want when playing plunder but obviously if you have double weapon xp tokens bring those into plunder or like i said earlier there's that strat with decoys in regular multiplayer but here inside of plunder there isn't the ability to do a safe cracker contract which was really big for weapon leveling as of last year with almazra's plunder the contract doesn't exist anymore in this new iteration but completing most wanted contracts will definitely allow you to gain an incredible amount of weapon xp on the weapon that you're holding i've also heard that buying items from buy stations will also net a decent amount of weapon xp for the gun that you have in hand and it's not really recommended to buy too much in matches of plunder you don't really need that especially if you're trying to win but if you're just leveling up weapons you don't care about how much cash your entire squad has or winning the game then yeah spending money that you have at the buy station buy some items but intel contracts and even the addition of scavengers now are incredible for weapon xp just want to point that out real quickly the scavenger contract for whatever reason wasn't included at the launch of warzone 2.0 last year or at all in almazra's life cycle but it's back here for urzikstan so so go ahead and grab those contracts and level up your weapons as much as you possibly can. But when it comes to winning matches of plunder, obviously you can get an incredible amount of XP for your player and obviously even towards your battle pass progression if you stay in the game longer. You can get a lot of XP by getting max cash and seeing that after action report, that XP bonus 
you can earn quite a bit by playing to the very end of a match of plunder. So first things first, in terms of your hot drops, what I've seen from playing quite a bit of plunder is a lot of people do drop Orlov military base or even towards the seaport. So kind of like the top right and the center left of the map itself. Although it doesn't really matter, I would say the way that Urzikstan is laid out and the way that plunder works in this new iteration of Warzone, it doesn't necessarily matter where you drop, but obviously the points of interest with the most amount of buildings is obviously where you want to be to get the most amount of money that you possibly can. Gas stations are also extremely, extremely useful for getting a ton of cash off the registers, off the shelves, and some of the chests that spawn nearby. Those are the biggest tips for just collecting cash around your environment. You don't want to really miss anything, but amongst one of the greatest features of Warzone 2's version of Plunder, which again, launched last year with Almazara and continues now with Urzikstan, is the ability to sell items. So if you go ahead and find a bunch of items around the environment, like laptops, game consoles, GPUs, you can go ahead and sell those at buy stations for tens of thousands of dollars, giving your team an instant boost and could possibly get you guys on top of the leaderboard for that game. I mean, people out there maybe don't do this enough. They're maybe playing plunder like they would used to in 2020 Warzone during COVID when you just got to loot around the environment and do contracts. Now you have the ability to sell items, which to me is a third and very important method in getting the most amount of money that you can. Now, although we don't have the safe cracker contract in this new version of plunder, I would still really recommend going for those scavengers. Now, obviously it's easier to maybe grab bounties since they'll probably be poached or you can go ahead and grab most wanted and survive a little bit. That can give you some quick cash boost, but honestly, the scavenger contracts are a ton of fun and pretty easy to do. I mean, every time you open up a scavenger chest, there's money inside, possible kill streaks, and items that you can sell. But once you get to that third scavenger box, you might find an advanced UAV, a decent amount of money from that. And on top of that, you get money for having completed the contract. So I think scavenger contracts are really easy ways to just farm up a decent amount of cash pretty quickly. Intel also isn't that hard to complete in matches of Urzikstan. Might take a little bit longer to finish, but you do get a pretty decent cash boost when doing that. So if you guys can farm as many contracts as you can and take over one one point of interest and give each other a little bit of space to kind of navigate and loot as much as you can while still being in close proximity to your friends so that if you guys get third partied or ambushed by a full squad, you guys can get together and beat them, then that'll be the best way and the most efficient way to take over an entire match of plunder. Now, there are items at a buy station that you could take advantage of. I mean, there's the new credit card or the insurance that you can go ahead and purchase, meaning that if you die out with some money, you'll still be able to preserve, I think, a decent amount of money even when you respawn. You don't just lose all of it. There's things you can buy that are relatively expensive, but in all honesty, there's really no need. If you're trying to win a match of plunder, there's no real need to buy that much from a buy station. Now, if you're doing what I talked about earlier in the video, which is spam buying some items with a certain weapon, then yeah, that can help you level up your weapon a little bit. Aside from that though, the only thing I'd really buy from a station is a cash deposit balloon. If you find these around the environment, take advantage of them. But if you wanna buy just that, I would say it's worth it in the case you do get wiped. You can go ahead and deposit hundreds of thousands into that balloon and you won't get the cash deposit balloon back as a rechargeable fuel upgrade. You have to get another one, but it's a good way to preserve your money in the case that you get ambushed by another team. And then obviously take advantage of any of the piggy banks around the map, right? The full cash deposit stations where you can deposit all your money, not just a limited amount like we do in the cash deposit balloons. So take advantage of that and ensure that you're doing that if you want to make sure that your team could remain on top. But of course, upon hitting the overtime in a match of plunder, which is after a team hits at least $2 million, you'll have a limited amount of time to continue playing in which things are going to be worth a lot more money. Item that you loot out of chest, contracts that you complete, they'll all reward even more money. And then the attack helicopters come in. They aren't that hard to destroy, I think, in comparison to the original Warzone from a couple of years ago. If you take one of those down, you'll of course get a drop of a bunch of money and some other valuable loot. That'll also help you get a bit of a boost. If maybe you're even behind your second, third, even fourth place, that can throw you all the way to first place by just looting the cash from those helicopter drops. And on top of that, throughout matches, of plunder, you'll see random cash care packages drop from the sky. If you could take advantage of those and steal some extra money, that could also be a pretty valuable boost to get your team back on top or to solidify your place in that lobby if you're already doing well as a squad. Now, there's even a bunch of random public events that could occur in matches of plunder. I'll put them on screen so you guys can see. I don't know if you guys feel this way, but I feel like in Almazra plunder, I would very, very rarely see any of these public events actually take place. I actually saw one in one of my recent matches of Urzikstan, and I was surprised to see it because I'm like, oh, public events could actually come in clutch. Depending on which event that you get, that could also help you get an advantage if you actually go ahead and read the description of that public event, and you can use that to get even more cash, and you can use that to take money from other teams, and it'll just change the way and change the pacing of the match that you're in. I think it's a cool way to spice things up and 
and give Plunder a nice new feel in comparison to how it originally worked many years ago with Verdance. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave our thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on the new version of Plunder here inside of Warzone Urzikstan? How are you feeling about the new metas? How are you feeling about weapon leveling? And even the strategy here, as I showed you, to win full matches and get max cash. Really hope you've enjoyed and peace out, everybody.